Watch him, Pie. Go, go swim. Pie, go swimming. Pie, swim. Swim, Pie, swim. Swim. Come on, swim. Oh, get some rocks. Go get some rocks. Go get him, Pie. Go. 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 Go on, go get him. Get them fishies. From what I understand, Pie. 3.14 is really her name, but my vet said that can't be a dog name, so I named her Pi. 3.14 is the mathematical equation of Pi. From what I understand, when she was a puppy, she was a candidate for being a USMC bomb dog. But because she has a little pink spot on her nose, that's called a deadly nose, that happened as she got a little, about six months old, they washed her out of the bomb dog training program. And she was in a shelter, and she went to several homes. And she was in a home in Medford, Oregon. And she had ate a couple of cats and chewed up a couple of dogs, bit the mailman, the UPS guy, tore up the yard, dug up an expensive underground sprinkler system, destroyed the house, ate a couch, did all kinds of awful, terrible Belgian Maryland law board working dog things. And uh, so I rescued her. And it took a lot of work, but I can trust her with cats now. She doesn't hurt other dogs. She's a real sweetheart. No potty on the camera. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. And I got to lean over here. But anyway, uh, it took a lot of work, but my stepdad was a horse trainer. He was a equestrian rider master for University of California, Davis, and he taught me how to train and trouble horses and take horses that were bound for the packing houses and for the slaughterhouses and turn a bad horse into a really good horse that you sell for three or four thousand dollars and so I learned how to take trouble animals and, and teach them new things okay enough of the boring pie she's not going to swim we can wash the creek for a bit while I rattle on and so I developed the ability to um, take a bad mean terrible vicious cat or dog and turn them into a loving sweetheart of an animal. It takes 24 hours a day. You basically have to live with the animal. You have to know how to speak dog and you have to know how to speak cat. When you speak to your dog and when you speak to your cat, come on, Pi, come over here. Don't wander off, Pi. Come on. Pardon me a minute. Pi. Service. Yeah, good go. Come on, let's go to work. Come on, service. When you speak to a dog or a cat, all they hear is blah, 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 blah. Whether you know or not, they read your vibes, they read your psychic energy, they read your body language. But when you're talking to them, all they hear is blah, 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 blah. If they can't see you, they can still feel your vibe, they can still uh, know your intent. I believe cats and dogs and most animals have psychic abilities that we humans might only dream about. So anyway, you need to know how to speak dog, you need to know how to speak cat if you want to be able to take a troubled animal and, and rescue it and turn it into a nice pet or a good service dog. Uh, in the service dog industry, uh, I'm a service dog advocate and service dog trainer. I never charge for my service, by the way. You can hit me up on my contact information if you need some service dog advice. And, oh goodness gracious, how come dog poo smells like that? Excuse me, she's relieving herself again. Where was I? So anyway, on service dog advice, my contact information is on my about page. Go ahead and give me a shout and ask me what you need to ask. 